In this tutorial, we will be discussing chiral molecules. We've talked before about structural isomers. So if you look here, C2H6O, both of these, ethanol and diethyl ether, have the exact same chemical formula. However, ethanol has an OH group at the end and diethyl ether has an oxygen in the middle. But the fact that they're all written the same, they have the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens, same number of oxygens, yet they're arranged differently is what makes them structural isomers. Same here if we look at C3H6O. Both of these compounds have that chemical formula. However, this is an aldehyde and this is a ketone. Sterile isomers are not structural isomers, but they are considered an isomer. An isomer is two different compounds with different arrangements. However, if you actually look at the bonds, it looks like they should be identical, but really they're not. When you take the mirror image of the organic molecule, it cannot be completely matched up. It's called non-superimposable. They're called chiral. So here is a uh, video that discusses it. So if you see here, this is a carbon atom in the middle. It has four different things coming off of it. If you drop a mirror down and take the mirror image, and this is what we mean by a mirror image, literally a mirror image. These two match up, these over here match up. The yellow match up and the white matches up. However, when you take the mirror away and they start to overlap, yeah, the yellow overlaps and the white overlaps. But if you notice, the blue and the purple did not overmatch, overlap. That's what's making it chiral, is that this has been flip-flopped with that. So chiral molecules have the same number of atoms, but are arranged differently in space, and that's what we're referring to here. They're not superimposable. So it's kind of like a hand. You cannot put your left hand into a right glove, or yeah, a right-handed glove. You can't put your left foot into your right shoe. It's just not gonna work. If you can do that, that's called achiral. So if we look here, the gloves are chiral. It's for specific hands. A baseball bat, however, is not. It's achiral. Glasses are not chiral, so it's achiral. Shoes, however, are chiral because they're specific for a, for a shape. Now, there is an easy way to determine whether or not something would be considered chiral, and that's if you look at the carbon. It has to have a chiral carbon in there. It has to be, that carbon has to be bonded to four different things. That's the most important. So when you're looking at it, look to make sure that you're absolutely looking at four different things coming off of that carbon. And that may, that would create a non-superimposable image. So for instance, here's the carbon. We have hydrogen, chlorine, iodine, and bromine. Here's the mirror that we had in that video. So here's the mirror image of it. If we try to overlap these, the bromine and the chlorine would not overlap. And that's what's making it chiral. These are called enantiomers. This one is an achiral carbon. It's not chiral because bromine and bromine, you have two of the same thing. When you overlap it, yeah, at first the bromine and the chlorine don't match it up. However, you can actually rotate this around to make it identical. So that's the takeaway message. You're looking for four things coming off of that carbon, four different things. So let's look here. Chlorine, methyl, ethyl, hydrogen. That's chiral because there's four different things coming off of it. Chlorine, methyl, hydrogen, hydrogen. Because those hydrogens are the same, that is achiral. That's not a chiral compound. Chlorine, methyl, bromine, hydrogen. That is chiral. So you're looking for four different things coming off of that carbon. 
Now we're going to move into Fisher projections, and this is very similar to what we saw in the previous section when we were looking at carbohydrates. And I talked about how the double bonded oxygen is always 100% of the time on top. A Fisher projection is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional molecule. Places the most highly oxidized carbon group on the top, which is why the double bonded oxygen is always on the top. They use vertical lines in place of dashes for the bonds, horizontal lines with wedges for as if it's coming out at you. So here's the dash lines. A lot of times they'll just do a straight line here and then they'll have a wedge here to say it's coming out at you whereas these are going back the dashes are going back the wedges are coming out all right so as we're looking at this this is a chiral carbon right here because you have the C the carbonyl group there hydrogen CH2OH NHO, OH. You have four different things coming off of that carbon, so that is why that's the chiral carbon. Notice that they simplify this with just simply the lines crossing. So you'll need to know that when you see that, that means that there is a carbon right there that they don't have written. Now, as you're looking at this, here's your double bonded oxygen. You want to look at the lowest chiral carbon down. This one down here is not chiral because you have two hydrogens, so that's not chiral. This is the chiral carbon here. You have an OH and an H coming off of it. You also have that CH2OH in this portion of the molecule up here. Four different things. That's how you know it's chiral. They do something called D or L isomers it's to assign what position that OH group is in. And that becomes important when we start looking at how they become disaccharides and polysaccharides. So we need to know where these OHs exist before they actually react. If the OH is on the left, it's an L isomer. If the OH is on the right, it's a D isomer. So, first of all, let's check whether or not each pair is a mirror image that cannot be superimposed. They're enantiomers. CH3, CH2OH, BRH. Those are antiomers because of the fact that there's four things coming off of it. Part B, because of this hydrogen here, since there's two of them, those are not enantiomers. Those are not, they can be superimposed. All right, so let's look at these Fisher projections. Notice once again, double bonded oxygens at the very, very top on both of them. These are actually both aldose because of the fact that the, it's an aldehyde because the carbon double bonded oxygens at the very top. It's not in the middle. If it was in the middle somewhere, it would be a keto. All right, so let's see if it's L or D. You follow the compound down and you look for the last chiral carbon. This OH group is on the right-hand side. That makes this a D. This OH group is on the left-hand side. That makes this an L. You want to do the very last chi chiral carbon, which is not this one once again, because this isn't chiral because of the two hydrogens. And that is your explanation of Fisher projections.